let's talk about some important PYQs through which we can revise certain crucial concepts of uh, control system uh, just few days before the exam and uh, also the most anticipated questions and the topic related to them. Like this question which is from Ruth Harvitt stability criteria. There are certain topics that are more anticipated. Ruth Harvitt stability criteria is one of them uh, that is that helps us to find the stability of a system in time domain. It is a time domain method of determining the stability of a system. What does the question says? The question says that consider an even polynomial P of S given by S to the power 4 plus 5 S square plus K plus 4. Question is where K is an unknown real parameter, the complete range of K for which the polynomial P of S has all of its roots on the j omega axis. Right. See, here we need to learn certain thing. When roots will lie on the j omega axis according to RH criteria, when an entire row of a route array becomes 0 completely. First of all, for the roots to lie on the j omega axis, a row has to be 0 completely and there should not be sign changes among the first column elements of route array. In other way, if a row of route array becomes 0 completely, it is not necessary for the roots to be on the j omega axis. For the roots to be on the j omega axis, a row has to be 0 completely. But if a row becomes 0 completely, roots need not be on the j omega axis. They can be uh, in, the, in the left side and right side of S plane as well. A row becomes 0 completely because roots are symmetrically located with respect to origin. So, for roots to be symmetric to origin, it is not compulsory for them to be on the j omega axis. They can be on the left and right side of the uh, ax, uh, in the S plane also that is to the left of origin and right of origin at equal distances or they may can be in a, in a complex plane. So, try to understand very clearly whenever a row becomes 0 completely, it is not compulsory for the roots to be on the j omega axis, but it is compulsory for them to be symmetric to origin. Huh. They can be symmetric to origin even being on the j omega axis, but for that to happen, there should not be any sign changes among the first column. So, most of the students, they interpret this statement wrongly that uh, whenever a row becomes 0 completely, then roots have to be on the j omega axis, not necessarily. For this statement to be always true, there should not be sign changes among the first column elements of route array. Right. Now, let us form the route array for this s to the power 4 <coughs> s to the power 4 s cube s o square s to the power 1 s to the power 0 1 5 I am sorry s cube coefficient is missing which means 0 if a coefficient is not present means that is 0 s square coefficient is 5, s to the power 1 coefficient is missing, so 0, then the constant is k plus 4. Now, a row of router is becoming 0 completely and most importantly, what does the question says? All the roots of the characteristic equation, all the roots of the polynomial have to be on the j omega axis. See, how may, uh, what is the order of this polynomial? Fourth order. It means all four roots have to be on the j omega axis. This is possible only when S cube row of route array becomes 0 completely because whenever a row becomes 0 completely that plus 1 those many number of roots are symmetric to origin like if S cube row becomes 0 it means 4 roots are symmetric to origin. If S to the power nth row becomes 0 completely where n is an odd number then n plus 1 number of roots are considered to be symmetric to origin. So, for 4 roots to be symmetric to origin, S cube row has to be 0. Yes, S cube row is becoming 0 and there should not be any sign changes among the first column elements. Then only all the roots will lie on the j omega axis. So, it is very simple for all the roots to be on the j omega axis. There should not be any sign changes among the first column elements most importantly and uh, whatever be the order of the polynomial that minus 1 the row must be 0. So, S cube row, yeah, that is becoming 0. Then what we do? We are going to form auxiliary polynomial from above row, which is nothing but the given polynomial. The given polynomial itself is the auxiliary polynomial. Then we differentiate this. That is 4S cube plus 
10 s is a derivative and we replace these zeros with the coefficients this zero is becoming 4 and this zero is becoming 10 and we complete the rotary this is i'm sorry uh, 4s cube plus 10s huh, 4 and 10 so this is going to be 20 minus 10 that is 10 by 4 5 by 2 2.5 this element is 2.5 and this element it becomes k plus 4 then this element is going to be 25 minus 4 into k plus 4 upon 2.5 and this element this is going to be k plus 4 so as i told you the condition is for all the roots of this fourth order polynomial to be on the j omega axis, s cube rho has to be 0 and there should not be any sign changes among the first column elements. Since this element is already positive, this is positive, this is positive. Now, these two have to be positive. This should be greater than 0, this should be greater than 0. From this, we can confine the answer as minus 4 less than k less than 9 by 4. So, answer to the question is option A from the given options. Let us talk about this PYQ, which is from one of the most important topics of control system, which is Nyquist stability criteria and very logical topic and uh, most anticipated one. Uh, many questions that are seen from this topic and it is an uh, easy, easy thing, it is really not uh, that difficult as a student feel it to be, it is just matter of three numbers N, Z and P, it is about all N, Z, P. All that you need to remember in the Nyquist criteria is n is equal to p minus z. What does n stands for? The number of times the Nyquist plot which is obtained corresponding to the Nyquist contour that should not pass through any poles of the function encircling the reference point minus 1 comma 0. And what does p stands for? Poles of the function that are encircled by the Nyquist contour. And z stands for zeros of the function that are encircled by the Nyquist contour. When it comes to closed loop function, zeros of q of s becomes closed loop poles. So, this becomes open loop poles, this becomes closed loop pole, this becomes number of encirclements. We have a question here. What does it says? Consider the closed loop control system with unity negative feedback and a kg of s in the forward path. So, we have got a plant with a gain k. And what else it says? Where k is equal to 2. The complete Nyquist plot of the transfer function g of s is given in the figure. It is to be understood very clearly. Uh, it is like a control system given like this. It is a bit tricky here. We are given with k is equal to 2 and we are given with a plant g of s under unity negative feedback as the question says. And what is the system, what is the question says? Nyquist plot of g is given. It means only g, not kg. So, how do I make kg as g by taking k is equal to 1, right? How does kg becomes g? This is Nyquist plot of g. It means it took initially k to be 1. If k is equal to 1, then kg becomes g. Nyquist plot for k is equal to 1 is given. Note that the Nyquist contour is chosen in clockwise direction. It is an important statement because if Nyquist contour is chosen in clockwise direction, then encirclements of the Nyquist plot with respect to minus 1 in anti-clockwise direction will be positive, in clockwise direction they will be taken as negative. Whereas, if the Nyquist contour is chosen to be in anti-clockwise direction, then the number of encirclements of the Nyquist plot with respect to minus 1 comma 0 in clockwise direction will be taken as positive and in anti-clockwise direction they will be taken as negative. There will be a big issue with the polarity. There was a question in the gate 21 2021 paper that has created such a controversy, right? So, for, I think uh, from there onwards, the examiners are careful in talking about the direction of the Nyquist contour also. It should be mentioned in the question. If it is not mentioned, we assume by default to be in clockwise direction. Fine. So, assume that G of S has no poles or uh, poles on the right side of the S plane, which means that P is equal to 0. So, P stands for how many number of open loop poles are in the right side of S plane, P is equal to 0. What does the question say is, find the number of closed loop poles that are located in the right side of S plane. Question is about Z, 
z is given by p minus n and we know p to be 0. So, we are waiting for n. What does n stands for? As I told you just now, the number of times the Nyquist plot encircling minus 1 comma 0. Right. Now, it is seen from the diagram that minus 1 comma 0 is outside the Nyquist plot and we consider that n is equal to 0 because it is not encircled. This is the mistake that we do in hurry. For k is equal to 1, this is the Nyquist plot and minus 1 is outside. But k is equal to 2, then this Nyquist plot will change and what kind of change it is? k is gain and gain is a multiplier. Gain is always a multiplier. It's never an divisor, it's not an add-in, it's not a subprime, it's always a multiplier, multiplier. So, we have to multiply these magnitudes. Remember, magnitude is never equal to gain, but magnitude is always proportional to gain. Magnitude and gain are different. This 0.4 and 0.5 happens to be magnitude of the function given. But magnitude is proportional to gain. So, if you change the gain, the magnitude also changes proportionately. If you are changing gain from 1 to 2, then the magnitude also changes suitably. So, magnitude 0.4 when gain is 1. Now, when gain is 2, that magnitude becomes 0.8. Magnitude is 0.8 when the gain is 1. When the gain is doubled, then the magnitude also gets doubled. That becomes 1.6. Right. So, what is going to happen? What changes are going to take place, take place here? I will use a different color. See, this 0.8 is going to become 1.6. This 0.4 is going to become 0.8. Thereby, minus 1 will lie inside the Nyquist plot. Now, it is outside, but later it will become inside. So, it will be encircled once and once again. Minus 1 is encircled twice by the Nyquist plot in the clockwise direction. As I told you just now, for clockwise direction of the Nyquist contour, Encirclements of the Nyquist plot with respect to minus 1 comma 0 in clockwise direction are taken to be negative. So, this Nyquist plot is encircling minus 1 comma 0 two times in clockwise direction. n is equal to minus 2. Therefore, how many number of closed loop poles are in the right side of S plane? Z that is equal to 2. Answer to the question is option C. Let us now talk about this PYQ and this is from the state space analysis or state model analysis which is an important topic and very frequently questions are seen in the gate examination from this topic for 1 and 2 marks both. And it is very interesting and easy topic scoring. Question is about the state space. Transfer function of a system is given. B and D matrices are already mentioned about the state model. We just are asked to find A and C matrices. We are asked to find A matrix and C matrix. See, there are many ways to solve this question. Let me tell you all the possible ways. The first method being something like this. See, it is a transfer function given y of s by u of s, which is 1 upon s cube plus 3 s square plus 2 s plus 1. By cross multiplying, we can obtain the differential equation from this, like d cube y of t by dt cube cross multiply and take inverse Laplace transform plus 3 d square y of t by dt square plus 2 d y of t by dt plus y of t is equal to u of t. It is a third order system. We need three state variables. <clears throat> Let one state variable be output. Let the second one be its derivative. Let the third one be its double derivative. Then x1 dot becomes x2, x2 dot becomes x3, then x3 dot that becomes third derivative of y, which can be written from the output equation as u minus x1 minus 2x2 minus 3x3. Now, uh, and output y that is x1. So, compiling, the, compiling this in the form of state model, A matrix is going to become x1 dot is x2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, x2 dot is x3, x3 dot minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And C matrix y is equal to Cx that is the state model, then C becomes 1, 0, 0. That is how we can answer.
This is one method. Second method, rather than obtaining the differential equation, we can rationalize this transfer function with the highest power of s and then we can obtain signal flow graph which is nothing but state state diagram and then we can uh, get the state model even from that right like another method is we have to rationalize this with the highest power of s then arrange that in the form of mason formula and obtain signal flow graph which is actually state diagram here and then from that you obtain the state model and then you can find a and c matrices the requirement two methods but we don't need any of this. The easiest way of finding A and C matrices in this question, see if the transfer function of a system is in the form of, let us say that uh, S cube plus B2 S square plus B1S plus B0 upon A2 S square plus A1S plus A0 with a gain say k let us say there is a transfer function then a matrix can be written like this it starts with the 0 1 0 0 0 1 when the one appears in the last position like one starts from the second position moves till the last position in the last row we will be writing the coefficients of the characteristic equation from the least to uh, n minus 1 this is n this is n minus 1 with opposite sign like minus b0 minus b1 minus b2 this will be a matrix b matrix will be all zeros except in this last row you will have the gain of this system c matrix will be coefficients of the numerator polynomial in this direction without sign changes a0 a1 a2 and a d matrix will be 0 in case of strictly proper systems, D matrix will be 0. Strictly proper means numerator polynomial degree is smaller than that of the denominator polynomial degree. D remains to be 0. You can directly write ABCD like this. So, on that basis, here C matrix has to be like this is 0 s power 0 plus 0 s power 1 plus 1 into s square. Uh, no, I am sorry. Um, it should be reverse. This has to be 1 s power 0 plus 0 s power 1 plus 0 s square. So, it becomes 1 0 0. C matrix will be 1 0 0. And A matrix minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. So, 0 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and 1 0 0. 0 1 0 0 0 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 c is 1 0 0 answer to the question is option c from the given options it's a direct way of writing so i taught you three methods i recommend the third one